Hello, my fellow bookworms. And welcome back to my channel. If you've never been here before, hi, my name is Heather. I really like to read and I'm also a middle school math teacher. So today's video is going to combine two of my favorite things, which are books and stats, pie charts, bar graphs, all that fun stuff, lots of numbers. So welcome to my quarter two wrap up and reflection. So I've already tried to film this video a couple of times and I am going to apologize if the lighting feels off. I've been dealing with a broken ring light for the last couple of weeks and I thought I fixed it and then I was filming this video and it broke. So I'm starting over and I know that my lighting isn't perfect. So please forgive me there. Second of all, if I'm looking down at all, it's because I'm looking at my laptop where all of these images that you will be seeing are currently located. So that's probably going to affect the lighting too, but you know, we're all here to support each other through hard times and sometimes broken ring lights are those hard times. Let's just get into the video. So my quarter two stats, I read 25 total books in the months of April, May, and June, which is what I'm counting for quarter two. I read a total of 7,467 pages and I listened to somewhere between 38 and 40 hours of audio. I didn't factor in the minutes, so it's somewhere around there. The longest book that I read was Ashes in the Star Cursed King by Carissa Broadbent and the shortest book that I read was The Tea Dragon Society by K.O. Neal. This next picture that I am going to show you is the breakdown of books that I read in the month and how I feel about that. So we can see in the month of April, I read eight books. This was Easter break. Then in May, I read six books, which this makes sense to me because it was the last month of school. We had state testing. We were trying to pack up our classrooms and things get really chaotic. So my book count is a little lower that month. And then the month of June, which is the month that started summer break, I read 11 books, which also makes sense. I had a lot of time to sit here and read. I also participated in two different readathons that gave me lots of motivation to keep reading. I also participated in lots of reading sprints over the summer and really found some good friends in this community. So June was just like the month of motivation to keep reading. Now I'm not going to sit here and go over every detail of the next slide, but it is a close breakdown of the length of the different books that I read. I will point out the things that I think are interesting. And that is that most of the books I read, if we take that blue section and that kind of tan section, were between 300 and 400 pages. That accounts for 45%. So almost half of the books I read being between that length. And I feel like a lot of romances and a lot of thriller mysteries you're gonna find are between 300 and 400 pages. So this makes sense to me. I also think it's interesting that 5%, so that's one book, was under 100 pages, and I know that was the Tea Dragon Society, and one book was over 600 pages, which was Ashes and the Star Cursed King. This next picture is just gonna break down whether I was reading authors that were completely new to me or whether I was reading authors that I had read from before. I really want to strike a good balance between discovering new authors, but also you know finding joy in those authors that I know bring me joy, and I think I did a pretty good job with this. So one author was a debut author and that was Katherine Bakewell that wrote Flower Heart, although I think that was just her debut in Young Adult. Anyway, I counted her as a debut author. I read 13 books with authors that were brand new to me and 11 books from authors that I had read before. There is an overlap there with Abby Jimenez because when I read Part of Your World, that was when she was new to me. And then when I read Yours Truly, I had read from her before. So that does cause a little bit of overlap. Same with Carissa Broadbent. She was new to me when I read Daughter of No Worlds, but then when I read The Crown of Nyaxia series, she was an author I had read from before. But I think that kind of evens itself all out in the mix. So like I said, I'm pretty happy with that. It's almost a 50-50 split of discovering new authors and reading authors that make me happy. This next picture is going to go over the different formats that I was reading in. Again, this doesn't really affect anything. It's just interesting to look at. So I read one graphic novel, and again, that was The Tea Dragon Society. I read five paperback books, seven audiobooks, eight hardback books, and four Kindle books is probably what a lot of people wanted to see is a genre breakdown. So I did break some of these genres down into very specific categories, um, especially in the realms of fantasy and romance, but I read different types of fantasy and romance. So I just wanted to see that was more for me than anything else, but let's go. We can see that I read one urban fantasy, one memoir, four fantasy romance, four fantasy, 
three mystery thriller, one epic fantasy, one young adult, three contemporary or literary fiction, and seven romance. Now we can combine some of those in weird ways. For example, if we wanted to combine fantasy romance and romance, that would have been 11 books. Or if we wanted to combine fantasy and fantasy romance and urban fantasy and epic fantasy, that would have been 10 books. So there's different ways that we could combine this, but this totally makes sense as far as my reading preference goes. Now we have my rating breakdown. I gave no books one star in this quarter, and I actually haven't given a book one star the entire year. I hope it can stay that way. I did have two two-star books, and I will show you all of the books in every single rating category later. I had five three-star books, nine four-star books, seven five-star books, and two books that I didn't give a rating to or that I DNF'd, and I had an average rating of 4.13. Something I do want to note about this bar graph is I give half star and quarter star ratings when I use story graph. And so if it says three star, that's anything that's between a three star and a 3.75. But now let's get into what you probably really wanna see. And that's where I put all of the books when I ranked them. So we're gonna start high and then end low. So for my five star books, we had A Man Called Uva, Air of Fire, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, Ashes in the Star Cursed King, Yours Truly, Part of Your World, and Daughter of No Worlds. Y'all can see from this that I really was having a time with Carissa Broadbent and Abby Jimenez because they just know how to write books that I want to read. My four star books are Swamp Story, The Last Word, Tress of the Emerald Sea, Serpent in the Wings of Night, Happy Place, The Tea Dragon Society, Fourth Wing, and What Lies Between Us. My three star books were Juniper Hill, The Summer of Broken Rules, The Soulmate Equation, The Neighbor Favor, and Flower Heart. My two star books were Further to Fall, this is by Katherine Cowles, it might be hard to see her name, and I don't need to say much about this if you've been around my channel for a while, Shady Hollow. And then two books that I didn't give a rating were Finding Me by Viola Davis. This is a memoir, and despite the fact that I absolutely loved this book, like loved it, I just don't give memoirs ratings because this is somebody's personal life and it feels icky to put a rating on somebody's personal life and what they've been through. And then also Wayward, I didn't mean to DNF this book, but I did DNF this book. I just put it down and never finished it. So, oops. So those two books do not have a rating. Overall reflections are, I think that I'm having the best reading year I've ever had since I was a kid and would read like probably a hundred books in a year. I would get a book and read it in a day, but I also didn't have the distraction of my phone. So that's something I really wanna work on for the rest of the year is just not picking up my phone when I read. And that's kind of hard because I vlog on my phone, but I really need to set limits of, yes, I can have my phone when I read, but it is only, for video purposes. I just, the, the older I get, the more distracted I find that I get, and that's not cool. I don't wanna be that way. I would really like to finish the year out strong. My reading goal for the year was 52 books, which is more than I've ever read in a year in my adult life, and I'm already at 49 books, probably gonna finish another one tonight. And that blows my mind, because I think last year I got to 43 at the end of the year. I'm just having a great reading year, and I really attribute that to being a part of this bookish community, to book clubs, to Discord and Patreon groups, and just finding people that love what you love because that's gonna ignite even more passion to keep doing what you love. So I wanna keep reading, I wanna keep growing my little booktube journey. I can't believe I'm almost at 400 subscribers. It blows my mind and y'all are so kind and so sweet when you leave me comments. And I just wanna say thank you to you guys as well. You know, I have some personal goals for my channel and for my social media. And I feel like that's another video for another time, but I do wanna leave you guys with one thing my school year is starting very soon like a week from tomorrow and that is going to kind of alter my posting schedule and my content just a little bit 
So I have been posting on Tuesdays and Fridays, but I am changing that as we go into the school year. So beginning in August, my videos are going to go up on Wednesdays and Sundays. So just be aware of that change. Some of y'all probably don't even notice, but if you're one of the people that likes to tune in to my videos in the morning when you're getting ready, just know that those days are shifting. And I just thank you so much for sticking around with me as some things have to change and shift. Also, I've been doing weekly reading sprints on Mondays and I will not be able to do those anymore as I will be at work. I'll still be joining in on other people's sprints and probably hosting some in the evenings, but it won't be a regular weekly thing. It'll just be when my schedule allows it. But I think that's it for today, guys. I know this video wasn't super long. Thank you for watching it. Hopefully you got a little insight to my reading life over the past three months. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more bookish content from me, like reviews, reading vlogs, recaps, TBRs, be sure to subscribe. I love hanging out with you guys and chatting with you in the comments or over on my bookstagram. As always, my social media is linked down below. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. And like I said, leave me a comment and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.